guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Godly Seeds Online from CWCCI. We have learned a lot in the previous episodes and we expect to let, learn more in this episode. I hope you're here with your Bibles, your books and your pen because we have a lot to learn. Before we start, let's put our hands together and close our eyes for a word of prayer. In Jesus name, thank you Father for today. We bless your name and I, we ask that as we come into your presence, you will teach us your word and make us to know whom you are through your word. Thank you, Father, for this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I love to praise God, and I know you do too.
Hi children, hi boys and girls. So we're back again for our lesson. Um, for some time now we've been talking on the fruit of the spirit and we've been talking on love. And I'm sure you have listened to the previous episodes where we've spoken about God's love. God sent his son to die for us because of the great love that he has for us. And he still has that love for us. That's why I didn't say had. He still has that love for us. And once we open up our hearts to him, he'll come in. So today I want to read us a story from the Bible. So if you open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke, chapter 15, and we'll start reading from verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. By the way, the, the title of this parable is the prodigal son. So I'm sure you may have heard of it. I'm sure you may have learned about it, but let's look at it again. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Yes, to feed pigs, huh? He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a, a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Let me stop there for now. So what do you think about the story of the prodigal son? The father said, he said to his father, I need my inheritance. And his father willingly, his father did not say, no, you are too small. No, you are not mature, you're not, you're not matured enough. The father just allowed him. What does that tell you? You have a choice. You have a choice. Loving God is a choice that you have to make. So his father decided to give him his inheritance and he went off and squandered it. He squandered it and he now began to feed swine and began to eat their food. And when he came to his senses, he decided to go back to his father. And he went back to his father and he even went back with the intention of being a servant in his father's house. But his father had been there waiting, had been there waiting. Oh, the love of this father is so great. And guess what? The love of God, your father, is so great. The father, every morning he would wake up, he would stand and look and see, oh, is my son coming? Until one day he saw his son coming from afar and he ran to meet him. The father had love and compassion for his son. And guess what? He forgave his son of every wrong thing that he had done. 
But before he did that, his, the, the, the son had to do what? Confess. He had to confess. So what am I trying to explain to you this morning? God loves you dearly. No matter what you do that you think is wrong, God's arms are always wide open to receive you when you come back to him. When you come back to him. God's love is unconditional. What does unconditional mean? It means that his heart is wide open. His heart is wide open to receive you when you come back to him. When you do something wrong and you get spanked, you ask for forgiveness and you come back to him, he will receive you, he will accept you. Also, despite everything that the son had done, the father forgave him. So once again, I'm still saying it. Don't think that when you do something wrong, you go and hide. Oh, God doesn't love me anymore. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. God loves you. God loves you. Let me hear you say it to yourself. Say, God loves me. In fact, I want you to do it in this demonstration. Say, God loves me. Can you do it again for me? God loves me. Good. Clap for yourselves. Yeah, you've tried. So just remember that God is love and love is God. No matter what you do, always come back and say, I'm sorry. Let's give an example. Maybe you were at home and your mommy and your daddy asked you to go and do something and you grumbled. Mm, I don't want to do this. Every time mommy is saying do this, every time daddy is saying do that. And maybe mommy heard you. Uh, or maybe mommy saw you, then what would happen? Mommy would decide to spank you for being naughty and being disobedient. But aside the spanking, make sure you go back and say, mommy, I am sorry for doing the wrong thing. Please forgive me. And guess what? Mommy and daddy will forgive you because they love you. Because what? They love you. Not to talk of our heavenly father who created you me, the universe. Everything about the universe shows God's love. Even everything about you as a little boy, as a little girl, shows God's love. So remember that God loves you. Remember that God's love is unconditional. But also remember that you have a choice to make. God is not going to force you to say, you must love me. You have that choice to make. So that's why I said you should say to yourself, God loves me. And you say also, I love God. Okay, let's do that one now. Say, I love God. Okay? So that's what I have to share with you for today. Don't forget that God's love is unconditional. And don't forget that God loves you. And he expects you to love him. time for us to learn our memory verse. Are we ready for that? So open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4 verses 19. Okay, I'll take it again. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. I'm just using my fingers to count it. And I'm sure you can do the same with me. Okay, 1 John chapter 4 verse 19 says, we love because he first loved us. Did you get that? I'll repeat it again. First John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. Who is he? God. God first loved us, so we should love others. Now we're going to say it again. Okay, you can use your fingers with me, but I hope your Bibles are open. Good. First John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. Right? 
Now, for the last time, let's say it together. You and I, okay? Together, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. I believe you got that. Thank you and see you next time. you had an exciting time in God's presence. I had an exciting time too. Remember what you were taught and put it to practice. Remember that when you were down, you would say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.